What is up everyone, Renfail here, and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are returning visitors, if you're new, welcome aboard. Today we are diving into Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords. Now, if you were here last week, we dove into the first Knights of the Old Republic game, KOTOR 1, to sort of look at it from the perspective of, are these games worth playing in 2023? Now, I have played KOTOR, the first game, through, I think, three or four times. This one, I know I did one complete playthrough way back in the day when it first launched, and I think I did a second partial when it first launched, and I have not played it since then. And I really don't have a lot of memories of this game other than, like, the old lady who becomes, like, your mentor or something. And I don't really remember much of it beyond that. So... I wanted to come back in and kind of treat this like a, it's not a first impressions video, but it definitely is, a, you know, is it worth playing in 2023 video, but also, you know, playing through and, and seeing this almost like it's the first time for me because I don't remember much of it at all. So if you've never watched one of my, you know, first impressions or review type videos before, I don't just do like a 10 or 15 minute review. What I do is I sit down and we go through and we actually play some of the content of the game. Usually these episodes end up being around 45 minutes to an hour long. So with that in mind, hopefully you've got your coffee with you or some sort of beverage or snack and etc. So you can follow along. Um, I will be turning off the camera for character creation and the playthrough, so if you're here to see my beautiful visage, which hopefully you are, um, soak it in while you can, because we're about to go cameraless and dive into character creation. Um, I'm not going to be doing a min-max character, because I really don't remember this game that well, so I don't want to try to do an advanced build. I just want to create what I think is going to be fun for me to play. We're going to go through the game, and at the end, we're going to talk about whether or not I think it's worth it in 2023. So without further ado, let's get into Star Wars Knights of the Little Public, The Sith Lords. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all those good things. Membership, super chat, super thanks. All those things are down below. Oh, by the way, Discord. Yeah. Alright, so without further ado, we're getting into character creation here. We've got the same... Well, it's not the same. It's very similar to the way the first game played. In the sense that you have sort of your scout build, your... Excuse me, your, your scoundrel build, your scout build, and your tank build. Only in this case, we're starting the game as Jedi. So we have the difference between the Jedi Guardian, who is a tank. It says this focuses on combat training and lightsaber mastery. We have the Jedi Sentinel, who's well-balanced and possesses many skills. And then we have the Consular, who's a master of the Force and spends less time on combat training, more time on Force, day, force stuff. And it does say here, recommended for advanced players only. So I'm going to take a sip of my coffee here and really think about what do I want to play here? Because I haven't played this game in a long time. Let's just kind of take, let's take a look at this. Let's go through with the Sentinel and see... Um, let's see what I can see. Oh yes, my my. Oh, I'm not even going to look any further. That looks pretty good right there. Also, it says that I have controller support. If that's the case, I'm going to, when I tr when I get into the game, I am going to try it with my Xbox controller. Uh, I've got a wireless old, you know, 360 controller that I've had plugged in forever. I'm going to see if it works. If it does, that's going to be very interesting if it's got built in. It's, it shows those buttons, and I just hope that that's actually the case. Um, portrait's good. Attributes. Oh, man. So let's take everything to 10 to start. Now, I know how I had it set up for the first game. Bearing in mind that we know force powers are very important in this game, we're going to want to take this up to probably... Oh man, that's a hard decision. I also want to be able to do conversation stuff. Well, I'm not going to be using... Am I going to be using a blaster? I really don't remember how this game plays. I should probably take Constitution. Well, or Intelligence, because I'd get more skills that way. Mm. 
Let's just see how this plays out. I may, I may, oh, it has recommended. What does it say for recommended? Just out of sheer curiosity. Um, plus two, okay. So strength 12, dex 14, constitution 14, intelligence 14. Um, I would, I would probably opt. to drop my con down and instead take like more wisdom I mean that looks pretty good I don't know um that feels really balanced right there that may not end up being what I want but because I don't want to spend 20 minutes in character creation during a, you know a video like this um Let's just go with this, and let's see what this feels like once I get into the game. It's kind of a jack-of-all-trades character, so we've kind of given him that jack-of-all-trades stuff. Uh, I do remember I want to go... Um, let's see what it says for recommended. Nope. We're going to do computer use. We're going to do... Persuade for sure. Max that out. Security, yes. Demolitions, yes, please. That feels pretty good to me. All right, feats. Okay, I've been granted the following feats for this level, which is cool. Well, the first thing I want to do is take the armor proficiency. Um, I want to be able to wear... Oh, I only have the one. I only get one to choose from. Well, we're going armor proficiency. Because I want to be able to wear, eventually, um, heavy armor. All right. Okay, let's give him a name. Let's do a random name. Talic Trill, Jack Gassic, Finner Omas, Jaren Flar. How about Flark? Jaren Fleur. Alright, let's click that play button and see what happens. Hey everyone, Renfail here with the uh, commercial part of the video where I say, hey, if you like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update. And thanks to all of our supporters are here on YouTube and over on Patreon, our highest members, our guild champions, Crazy Relative, Remy D here on YouTube. And don't forget if you want to support, it's really easy. You can do the memberships below, the Adventurers Guild, three different tiers. There's also the super thanks on any uploaded video or YouTube short that you find. There's also, of course, the super chats and stickers that you could do on any live stream or premiere, and the Patreon page if you want to dive into the fantasy world that I have with my brother and my wife, which is a tabletop game, a point and click adventure game, and a fantasy book series. All are great ways to keep this channel going and me going full time. Thanks again for those of you who support. Let's get back to the video that you're watching now. Primary power. Offline. Multiple hull breaches detected. Proximity alert. Oh, so I'm starting off as the droid. Okay. The Evan Hawk is adrift in space after a terrible battle. Most of its crew are dead or dying. You lie in the medical room in critical condition. You won't survive long without medical attention. The hyperdrive is damaged. Main power must be restored in order to bring the engines online and dock with the nearby Paragus mining station for much needed repairs. Your fate and that of the Ebon Hawk depend upon T3M4, a lone astromech droid. Return to this location at any time to skip the prologue. 
Well, we don't want to skip. Oh, look at this. I have controller support. Oh, this is so cool. I'm very happy about this. Um, so obviously it did not record the, um, uh, for some odd reason, Streamlabs didn't record the intro animation sequence. But that's fine because they just kind of gave us an overview that the ship's been stranded in space and we kind of know what we need to do. So we're going to continue the prologue and I am playing with my controller, um, which is awesome. I much prefer doing controller. So here we go. Press W A S D to move T three M four and turn. Press caps lock to toggle first person free look. Hold control to look about. Well, that's not going to happen. Um, I will tell you that I feel like I might need to inverse the controls. We'll see here. One thing I want to do really quick, if I can. Um. Feedback. No, no, no. Gameplay. I want to do. If there's a. There, I want to be able to. Mm. I'm going to try to crank this up and see if this also applies to the controller. Oh, it does, I think. So. There we go. Alright. Galaxy map. This is the galaxy map. It shows you are near Paragus, a mining colony. When the hyperdrive is fixed, you can use the galaxy map to choose a destination planet. Cool beans. Well, the only thing I can do right now is that. So we'll cancel out of that. Uh, I'm going to have to invert the controls probably. It's got... Uh, oh, that was a weird hiccup. The active quest screen includes important information. This room contains the class field cylinder and the communications console. To target one of these objects, move close to it, left click on it, or press Q or E to cycle through the available targets. To interact with an object, first target it. And then left, you will come across many containers, some of which will be locked. The computer spy you just picked up can be used the computer terminal to access functions, such as opening doors. We're not communications console, damage minimal functionality, and I have some options here. I can repair it. I have one spike. I have... Okay. Slice the system, please. Open the main hold containment door. I may have to use the mouse for this part because it doesn't give me the option to. Your security skill is too low to open this footlocker. However, you can use your weapon to bash it open. Whatever. Slice the system. I have no spikes. Somebody's banging on the door over there. You can hear a banging noise coming from the other side of the door. But the door is sealed shut and cannot right. be opened from the outside. A locker key. This old woman appears to be dead. There is a key card on the body that looks like it opens a locker somewhere. Your security skill is too low. If you need help exploring the Evan Hawk, access the map screen by pressing M. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. This is the main hole. Okay, I'm a, so maybe I should just attack this and see what happens. So interestingly enough, this one... Not quite sure how to make the... 
controller do it, but with the mouse I can do it this way. By the way, those sound effects are really annoying. I'm probably gonna have to turn that down. Alright. Sometimes bashing or blowing open a container will break some of the items in the container. But okay. you can use even broken items. They can be turned into useful components at a workbench. Well, that's good to know. Slice the system. Enter utility lift and the garage. Access security doors. Close outer garage door. Okay. Open inner garage door. Depressurize critical areas. Aha! Uh -huh. So close outer garage door. And then open inner garage door. There's a workbench. I see it. Display security door status. Hull breach. Engine room door inoperable. Uh, access security cameras. View outer garage door. Inner garage door. Engine room camera. Alright. Utility lift camera. Access security doors. I think we're done here for now. I want to know what... That's got to be related to this, but I also don't want to kill, like, the lightsaber sound effects and combat sound effects, but that, um... That stuff is really annoying. It's from that monitor right there. Alright, so that opened that door. Still can't do anything with that door. This blast door is magnetically for accessing and repairing the hyperdrive. Use the lift controls to go up. Well, we're gonna save that. Look at all these doors are locked and I don't have the security skill. I'm gonna double check that there's no other doors that I can get past. I don't think there are. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. <laughs> Ooh, I was able to this get into this. Talking to other characters is much like using the computer console in the cockpit. Scroll through your response options or move the mouse cursor, and then click to select a response. Note that some responses may influence how other characters react to you, so choose carefully. Furthermore, certain skills, powers, and attributes may modify what choices you have. Or how successful you are with those Man, this choices. is I yeah, this this expands so much upon the conversation options in the first game. We start getting into like what they ended up doing with like Pillars of Eternity here. Three CFD is malfunctioning. You can fix him by using a part. Luckily, you have already found one. If you repair three CFD, he can join your party and assist you in repairing the ship. Hell yeah. Success. You have fixed three CFD. Now he will join your party. He's in much better shape than I am. Three CFD is now a member of your party. To change which party member you control, click on their portrait or press tab. Later, when you have more companions, can add and remove party members. Use the key card you found to open the locker. The impact armor from this locker can be equipped on the equip screen. To open the equip screen, click on the blaster icon in the top right area of the screen or press Uh oh, what just happened? Sensor droids emerged from this box when you opened it. These droids will make for excellent target practice. Use the weapon from this container to attack the droids. I also need to equip that armor that I got. Yep, yep. Um, droid impact armor.
All right. And that's the other dude. Okay. A weapon from the equip screen. To open the equip screen, click on the blaster I Man, I'm going to have to give up the controller, I think. It's not nearly as... I think it's great for movement, but this is where things get a little funny. It's it's funky the way the controller is. Alright. Yep, I'm familiar with how these work. Change your target by pressing Q or Q. Uh, what's these? What are these stances? Aggressive. Pursues photos needed. Okay. Oh, you can use the mouse scroll wheel. All right, hang on. I'm putting the controller down for a little bit, guys. It's 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 all a little wonky. Let's try ranged, and then put you ranged as well. Perfect. Alright. I need to heal myself. Pulled a weapon out or something. Interesting. All right. Um. The lock on this container is too difficult to open. You'll need to use a security tunneler to help open the lock. Look in the unlocked cylinder next to this one to find security tunnelers. If you encounter a difficult lock on a container or door, you can use a security tunneler on it to improve your chance of opening the lock. Aha. Use a security tunneler to open the high security cylinder nearby. Alright. Point of that being what? This is the end. This is the end. This door is damaged and cannot be opened with your security skill or by bashing it. Trap. You will have to find Take the lift outside to find to one. Alright, well that's door. later on. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. I want to see if there's the any other... Um... <laughs> I probably shouldn't have wasted my security spike. Alright, that's my character. Hold up a minute. This is the medical room. The med pack can stabilize your condition. Treat injury. Success. You are stabilized. To recover fully, you will require the medical facilities at the Paragus mining station. But you are not in any danger of dying from your wounds right now. All right. You have already been stabilized with the med pack. There is no so I can't have him join the party yet. It's literally just going to be the droids. This is the utility loot. <sighs> to access the area beyond this door, you will have to use solo mode, default B. Click 
the solo mode button at the bottom right area of the screen. While in solo mode, move 3CM to the security computer to open the door for you. To where? To access the area beyond this door, you will have to... To the security computer. This is the main hold. Access security doors. Access security doors. Um, close inner garage door. Open an outer garage door? connect to the trigger mechanism for the inner and outer garage doors. You can open and close the doors from here. Door closed. Do you want to do anything else? Do nothing. This is a workbench. With a workbench, you can break down objects in your inventory into components. You can then use the components to create repair kits, weapons, armor, and upgrades. Because of the damage to the Ebon Hawk, this workbench has limited functionality. You can still use it to create a repair kit, which you can use to repair yourself. Use the workbench to break nice. down the items you've found into components. Then use the components to create a repair kit. I want to break down the broken item. Creatable items, I want to create a repair kit. Okay. All right. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. When the Ebon Hawk has landed, this is where you will go to exit the ship. The door is sealed shut, but the magnetic clamps are not engaged. You may be able to override the door's locking mechanism from outside the ship. This is the garage. Outside the ship? Well, how do I get outside? Sparking wires connect. Yep, yep, yep. Door opened. No, I didn't do you want, want to do anything else here? Door closed. Do you want to do? I want to see. There was a. Where's the? This is the utility lift. I don't remember where the lift was that I was going to use to go outside, right? This is the cargo hold. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. This is the main hold. You can hear a banging noise coming from the other side of the door to the storage compartment, but the door is sealed shut. I can't really do anything in here that I know of. These sparking wires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open the door. Garage door. Opened. Do you want to do any? To 
access the area beyond this door. Yeah, I thought I could use the lift to get outside. This is the this door is damaged and cannot be opened. Take the lift outside the email box. Well, how do I take we'll the lift? Find and use an explosive trap to open this door. Take the lift outside the Evan Hawk to find one. Yeah, this is where I'm confused. How do I take the lift? Where is the lift? This is the garage. All right, hold up. Where's the lift? Is that the only lift? How do I use the lift? This, this door is damaged and cannot be opened. This is the goal to access the area beyond this door. You will have to so this is the utility lift. You can use there we go. I had to close that door. Go outside. Herpa derpy! Well, the ship's pretty messed up. I don't think I want to be in solo mode anymore. No. Okay. This is the starboard side of the Evan Hawk. This open hatch has some parts that will be useful for getting made. This busted engine port has some needed parts for the Evan Hawks hy This busted engine port has some needed parts for the Evan Hawks hyperdrive. Take the parts here back down below to get main power restored. Don't forget to explore the other s this is the port side of the Evan Hawk. The bubbles ahead indicate mines yep, that I'm aware. approach mines carefully. Recovering mine I don't I don't need a walk through on how mines work. I'll take that. You can use the explosive device in this missile to blow open the engine room door inside the Evan Hawk. This will give you access to the hyperdrive. After you plant a mine, back away quickly so that you do not... This is one of the Evan Hawk's quad laser turrets. They are damaged but you can scavenge some parts from it to use in repairing the Evan Hawk. God, the... I tell you what, as janky as the controls were in the first game, the camera controls here are so janky. This is the starboard side of the Evan Hawk. These exposed wires control the door to the starboard dormitory. The door is currently sealed. Open it. Success. The door is open. Okay. Through the garage, it says. All right, I think. I think that's all the pieces I can get in here. 
Come on, go up there. You can use this lid to take. I'm conscious of that. Let's go inside. I will say the tutorial is a little. <laughs> it's a little over the top with all of the speaking really slow and repeating the dialogue over and over. All right. Um. It was the garage door, right? To access the area beyond this. Yeah. So you need to go back over here. Security doors. Open. Yeah. This is the utility lift. I'm familiar with what that this is. This is the garage. To access the I will say this is a little janky. Oh god darn it. Was it this one or the other one? This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. This is the Aha. starboard dormitory. Give me all your parts. Droid flamethrower. Found a droid flamethrower. Yep, 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 yep. Door closed. Do you want to do anything? Out of curiosity, can I open this door when that's shut? This blast door nope. is magnetic. This is the garage. The sparking wire. Door open. Do you want to do anything? Else? Gosh darn it. Door. Do you want to? Door. Do you want to do? <laughs> I'm like. Tap, 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 tap. Security doors. Close inner. Open outer. Lock out. Now let's close that again. Alright, now we are going to do this. This is the engine room. The starboard engine is badly damaged. Fixing it won't be... The port engine is shut down, but appears in town. Fixing the hyperdrive will allow you to... The hyperdrive is suffering badly. You won't be able to make the jump to light speed until it is fully repaired, and you do not have the needed equipment here on the Ebon Hawk. However, you should be able to rig the hyperdrive to restore prime. Okay, let's do it. Success. The hyperdrive is online. Primary power is restored. Only one step remains. Return to the galaxy map in the cockpit and travel to Paragus. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. This is the main hole. This is the cockpit. Ooh, did I miss this? No, no, it was the skip prologue thing. You can now plot a course to the Paragus mining station. To dock with Okay. 
travel. The sensors show the door to the storage compartment is being sliced. There is someone, or something, else alive on the Ebon Hawk. Time to go find out who it is, or what it is. <gasps> Meat bags. <laughs> That's not good. Oh, did he just fry my droid, buddy? Something just happened. How are we all of a sudden all in back to tanks? Creepy voice in my head. Journal! You have awakened in a medical bay in an unknown facility. The last thing you remember is being a passenger on the Republic capital ship, the Harbinger. You should find out where you are, and how you got here. Well, that's the mystery, isn't it? Merchant Cultal Tanks can heal most wounds. If you have lost fatality points during your explorations, return here to the medical bay and use the empty Cultal Tank behind you to heal your wounds. Um... Yes. Let me, um... Alright, that's not what I want to do. I don't think. Definitely want to turn that back down. messing with the controls at this point everybody because it kind of oh that actually feels much better if I, if I if I wanted to use the mouse and keyboard that's that's probably a good option but we can also do what I don't like is this right here See that camera, that janky camera? It's like, I feel like I might want to, uh... Um... Oh, that's much better. Okay, I just needed to invert it. Alright, cool. Well, guess what, everybody? We have now figured out the facility and everything else. Alright, everybody, so it looks like I've got my track outfit on and I'm ready to explore this station and see what fate awaits me and what brought me here. I still don't know why there was an assassin droid on board my ship. Of course, this character doesn't actually know that because he was passed out. What happened to the droids? I don't know any of this. That's the puzzle we have to figure out. So, um, here's, here's where... Our, let's talk a little bit about the game itself and everything else. Um, much like the first game, I feel like the you know the visuals look pretty good for an older game. It is Star Wars, so I know automatically I'm going to enjoy it. Having played this game before in the past, I remember this being a much longer and bigger game than the first one. Plus, if I remember correctly, you get access to your Force powers much sooner, and you get a lot more Force powers in this game, as I recall. And I just remember this being a really good storyline, even though I think it was pretty plagued with bugs at launch. 
Um, it does suffer from some janky controls, which I think at this point I have figured out after 45 minutes of gameplay and like tweaking. And I was using the mouse and keyboard for a little bit, but I think I've got the controller figured out now that I've tweaked the turn rate and inverted the axis and everything else to the, the way that suits my play style. So I think this is going to work pretty well. Um, playing with the controller from here on out. Obviously you can play with mouse and keyboard if you want. Um, it, this one is a little bit different than the first game in the sense that I can actually play it in full screen. I can play this in 1920 by 1080 so I can actually go in here to the graphics and it actually shows me in screen resolutions. Um, oh, you can't do it. It says only from the main menu. Um, but I can choose, I have 1920 by 1080, you know, so I was able to choose that for, um, you know, whereas the in the first game I was showing you guys, I, I had to actually play it in windowed mode. Um, and this one, there is some weirdness, but it has nothing to do with playing the game. It has to do with recording the game. It plays just fine. But I know in terms of recording it in Streamlabs, um, it doesn't capture the... And this is just quirkiness for those of you who might want to stream this game. Streamlabs does not capture the cutscenes for some odd reason. And I actually had to set this up in windowed mode as opposed to um, playing it in game mode. Because it wasn't actually... It wasn't... It wasn't... Um, the gameplay just freeze, would just freeze. So I could be playing the game, but it just showed a frozen screen on OBS. And I'm sure there's some... Or in Streamlabs. So I'm sure there's some configuration tweaks that need to be made there for streaming and stuff. But otherwise, I just set it up in windowed mode like this, and we're fine. So um, once I got around the jankiness of the controls, and it started coming back to me... Um, obviously, I think I feel like the prologue is a little weak compared to the prologue in the first game. But that's because you're controlling a droid. Um, and then... As opposed to when you know your main character who you want to play as, but I realize they do that for new players who need to learn the controls of the game and everything else. So you can skip that prologue and it's going to stick you right here. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Now from here, um, I'm going to be doing a little bit of exploration uh, to see if I want to use this character to do a playthrough or if I'm going to do a different build. But at some point this year, not right now because uh, you know Diablo 4 just launched and. I got other things on my plate, but I have a window in July, in t from the beginning of July until the end of August, I have a window where I don't know that there's any games coming out that I want to play. Um, obviously, I have Baldur's Gate 3 pre-ordered at the end of the year, and Starfield's coming out in September. So more than likely, unless something comes out that I am not thinking about right now, I'm probably going to do a playthrough of this game at some point in July and August and I'll do a complete playthrough series of this game here on my channel. So if that sounds cool to you and that sounds fun, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Join us in Discord. Support if you can. Memberships below are the best way. Recurring memberships but super chats and super thanks are always appreciated. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you think about this game and if you've played it before. If you've got questions, drop them down in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe and may the force be with you.